the last days. The Antichrist is around the corner. The false prophet's already here. Armageddon is going to be in our children's generation. The mark of the beast is here. It hasn't the technology is here. God is saying to his people is look, the spirit of the Antichrist, which is the spirit of man, is going to come and take over this world. Get ready, bride of Christ. The bride is not ready. She is has not awoken yet. She is sleeping. Got awoken this morning by the by the Lord. Earthquake that too many people were dead. The Holy Spirit was saying to pray. And I'm not here to scare you, I'm here to warn you. Time and it calls for desperate measures. We're in the season of the last call where the shepherd is bringing in the final harvest. God has an exit plan, it's the rapture. How are you doing? Hi everyone. We're here for Lady Jesus. Let me get my anointing oil and let's just anoint us today. Lord, I just thank you for your beautiful children, Lord. Edie, all of us, your beautiful children. Thank you, Lord. Edie, Rote, God. Thank you for the Lady Jesus study, Lord, that you have us in, the handbook. We're on session two. Lord, Holy Spirit, I just put on the arm of the Lord, helmet of salvation, the mind of Christ, breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of Christ, belt of truth, that Jesus is the truth. Feet shod with the gospel of peace, Jesus is our peace. Sword of the Spirit, Jesus is the sword of the Spirit. Shield of faith, Jesus is our shield on our cloak of zeal, Lord. We put it on and you are our righteousness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We just declare and decree your your mercy and your grace and your favor today, God. Thank you, Lord. So one of the things that's going on right now is just seeing We invite you, Holy Spirit, to speak through me. It is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In Jesus' name. You know, one of the intro things that the Lord spoke to me about this morning, about the Lady Jesus Handbook, God wanted me to talk to you about qualifiers. Lady Jesus. God wanted me to talk to you about qualifiers. What qualifies us to walk in the mantle of Jesus Christ as the Bride of Christ? The Lord, as I was getting ready, the Lord said to me, There's so many people who feel disqualified. There's so many people that feel unworthy and disqualified to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They think that they must should have lived a perfect life in order to even have the title Lady Jesus, to be the bride of Christ and to walk in the anointing. And God wants you to know that every single person he picked was a broken vessel. Paul was Saul who was murdering Christians. He was persecuting Christians when God called him to be an apostle. You know, Noah says after he came through the flood, was drunk. And he was drunk and naked. Noah had a drinking problem. I guess that's where you get the drunken sailor, you know, uh, thought process. But Noah was called a man, a righteous man, a righteous man. Drinking alcohol didn't disqualify him from being righteous. Even being drunk didn't disqualify him from being righteous because the righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Righteousness that we get through Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The righteousness we get is in Christ Jesus. It is, and it is through the amazing grace of God, the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ, is the only qualifier. The Lord said that there are there have been people who have been abused, abandoned, uh, misguided, molested, and who feel dirty and filthy and disqualified to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord says that you are qualified by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are a workman approved unto God. 
because of the redeeming grace of God. The Lord showed me this morning that it's the people closest to you who know your history who will tell you, who is this harlot that calls herself Lady Jesus? Who is this drunk who calls himself Jesus, a follower of Jesus, the bride of Christ? Who is this drug addict or prostitute who calls herself or himself Lady Jesus, or a Lord Jesus, if you're a man. Who are you to call yourself that? Don't you realize who you are and where you've come from? God wants you to know. He has seen all those sins. And he has wiped them away. And he has qualified you to be his servant. To be his preacher, his evangelist, his apostle, his prophet, his minister. It is the amazing grace of God that is going to do it in and through you. And the Lord says, Edia, you are in good company. Because God says, when I call Joseph, when I call Joseph, and, um, and I gave him that dreams of the sun, moon, and the stars bowing down and worshiping him. His brothers ridiculed him. They said, who does he think he is? And it was his brothers who sold him into slavery. It'll be those who are closest to you, who know your history, who will say, how could you be qualified to serve God? It was um, when King David was called by God to be a king when he was 14 and all of his older brothers were passed up passed up and they looked more qualified but God wasn't looking at the outward appearance he's looking at the heart and he chose King David and when King David had that heart of a warrior when he was a teenage boy and he went to to fight Goliath with that little stone his brothers looked at him and said who do you think you are his older brothers who were in battle as warriors who were afraid of Goliath were standing there saying to King David who do you think you are little shepherd boy you're here with your pride and arrogant self to go and kill Goliath when we can do it. But God used that tiny little shepherd boy with a giant heart. You know, King David had a giant heart. He had the heart of a giant. I remember when I used to take my little dog Billy walking. He was a little poodle. And I'd take him walking in the park. And when Billy would be in the park and he would see these big old pit, pit bulls. And Billy would try to be aggressive against the pit bulls. Because Billy had, had a giant heart. He thought he was a giant. He thought he was bigger than the pit bulls. But his brothers looked at him and said, who do you think you are to fight Goliath? But King David fought Goliath and won and encouraged the entire army of Israel. Thank you, Father. Let your Holy Spirit flow through us. We issue your mercy and grace today. And we look to you, Father. We look to you, Father. We look to you, Father, for you to manifest your mercy and your grace in and through us today. We are your empty vessels so that you could fill us up with your glory, your Holy Spirit, that you may speak to your people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your redeeming grace. God says your sins are forgiven. He says your sins are forgiven. He just told me, forgive their sins. Lord, I forgive these sins. The word of God says that if we forgive one another, we'll be forgiven. And God tells me to tell you, your sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. Thank you, Father. We forgive your sins. I forgive your sins. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Just like my sins have been forgiven. Just like I have been redeemed. Thank you, Father. There's such a gentle presence of the Holy Spirit today. Gentle presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, when, uh, he, when Jesus went into ministry and he was calling himself the Son of God, the Pharisees would say to, say to him, they would say about him, isn't, wasn't he born, the neighbors and the Pharisees would say, wasn't he the guy from Nazareth, Galilee of Nazareth, Nazareth of Galilee or Galilee of Nazareth? Is, isn't he, isn't he Joseph's and Mary's boy that's calling himself the son of God? Who does he think he is? 
I just want you to know that when you step in to this place of anointing that God has for you, those people who know your history are going to feel that you are disqualified to step into your place in history as a history maker, as a movement leader, as a person of God appointed for this task, when you step into your place of anointing, the people who have known you for years and years and years are going to tell you, you are not qualified for the call of God in your life. They're going to try to talk you out of the answering the call of God in your life. They're going to tell you you are not qualified to meet the call of God in your life. And you're going to feel challenged in your faith to say, God, I'm not righteous enough to answer this call. Who am I, God? Why would you choose me? And I want you to know you're in good company. Those same words were spoken by Moses. When God called Moses to be a deliverer for his people, Moses said, oh Lord, I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. When Isaiah was called as a prophet, he said, God, I'm a man of unclean lips. How could I be a prophet to the nations? When God calls you, the natural response is to feel disqualified for the call of God in your life. And God wants me to tell you, you are unqualified. Whom God calls, God equips. This is not a work of the flesh. It is a work of the spirit. It's from Zechariah chapter 4. Thus says the Lord, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. There's so many who've been raised in the church, who've lived life right, who've done good, and and they're saying, well, I've lived a perfect life. I am qualified to be a minister. You know what that's called? That's called self-righteousness. Because your righteousness... Jesus said has to be better than the righteousness of the Pharisees in order to enter into the kingdom of God. And that is a Pharisaical righteousness that says, I've lived life right and I am righteous. Because the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of God. There is only one righteousness that is a qualifier for our eternal life and for our ministry and our call in God. Answering the call of God means that we answer the call of Christ. The answer, the call of John the Baptist where he says, repent for the kingdom of God is here. Repent. Repent of your wicked ways. Oh, I get the Holy Ghost right now. Repent of your wicked ways. To make that 180 degree U-turn and answer, answer and be baptized in water and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord and be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the qualification for answering the call of God. Angels of the Lord. Thank you. I was just praying. I was telling the angels to fix the Wi-Fi problem. Like the Lord was saying, fix the, tell the angels to fix the Wi-Fi problem. As soon as I said it, it was fixed. Thank you, Lord. I said, angels, fix the Wi-Fi problem in my spirit. And man, it was done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God says, I am the one who's going to get you there. If you feel disqualified, the Lord says, I am your qualifier. The nails that I took on my hands and my feet, the thorn on my brows, the blows on my back, the spear in my side is what qualifies you, idiot, to walk in my mantle. God's just showing me, he's just showing me, 
he's just showing me a man with a blow, uh, you know, like a blower in the yard blowing away the leaves and it's like Jesus is that gardener who's cleaning up your yard he's cleaning up your yard and he's cleaning up your home and he's cleaning up those places where you feel dark and dingy and dirty and disqualified and Jesus is washing that all of that area with his own blood and he is saying here's another nook here's another cranny here's another little crevice that needs to be cleaned out and Jesus is cleaning out everything right by the blood of the lamb by your faith and the blood of the lamb you are getting cleansed of your unrighteousness and becoming qualified to have the mantle of Christ to walk in this glory for the last days, this end times. There's just a lot. I sense, I just sense a lot of guilt and shame. And there are labels that have been placed on you. You know, you've been a victim of abuse and you've been called a slut or you've been called a harlot or you've been called an addict or you've been called a junkie. You've been called an adulterer. You've been called a fornicator. You've been called idiot. Bad things I can't even say. There are labels that have been placed on you. And those labels you feel have made you disqualified to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To be an apostle. To be a prophet to the nations. To be an evangelist. To be a teacher. A preacher. A king. A queen. A daughter of the God. A son of God. And you feel disqualified because of this label that's been uh, placed on you. And you have been cursed with this label. And some of you were born drug babies. And you feel like you're a druggie. But you know what? God says, you're not a druggie. You're made in my image. You're not a junkie. You're made in my image. You're not a harlot. You're made in my image. I am going to purify you with my blood, with my life, with my holiness. I cover you. The picture God is showing me picture God is showing me is the story of Boaz when Boaz was uh was this wealthy man and Ruth this 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 uh this uh, widow had come back into the promised land and her and Naomi were without provision and they were poor because their husbands had died and they as widows had come back to to God's land and they they and Ruth said Naomi said go and glean from Boaz's field he's one of our kinsmen redeemers he's a family member go and glean from his field and one day Naomi said to her you know I think that Boaz is a kinsman redeemer and he may marry you because she had, Ruth had favor with Boaz and he would let leave extra food for her when she came to glean in his field he would lead tell his workmen hey leave extra grain for her because I want her to get a double portion I want her to get more I want her to have enough and more than enough and she'd come home with these bundles of grain and Naomi's like how did you get all that and it was because Boaz would make sure his workmen were leaving extra for Ruth thank you Lord and so the point is that Ruth would get extra and so one day Naomi said to her you know Boaz is our kinsman redeemer I want you to wash up clean yourself up put on a nice outfit and I want you to he's going to be on the threshing floor and I want you to go lay at his feet and I want you to uncover his feet and lay at his feet and when he wakes up tell him to cover you tell him to cover you that basically means that Ruth was to go and propose to Boaz Naomi told her go and propose to Boaz ask him to be your covering it's like the Holy Spirit was telling Ruth go and ask this man to be your husband wow ask him to be your covering because right now you have no covering you have no covering you have no covering and God wants to cover you. Go ask this man to be your covering. Right now you're a single woman. Ask you're a widow and you're without covering. Go ask this man to marry you. And so Ruth had to clean herself up and go in the middle of the night in obedience to the voice of Naomi who was instructing her under the under the guidance of the Lord. And she went and laid at Boaz's feet. She uncovered his feet and she laid at his feet. And in the middle of the night when he woke up and he felt his presence at his feet, he woke up and he saw Ruth and he said, what are you doing there? And she said, cover me cover me and Boaz said to her 
I am not first in line to cover you. I would love to cover you, but there is a kinsman redeemer who has priority over me and he has to reject you before I can accept you. And so he went to the kinsman redeemer and he said to him, do you want this widow? And the king's kinsman redeemer said, no, I don't. No, I don't. She's all yours. So Boaz came and he covered Ruth and made her his wife. And you know, that covering of that sheet is what I see God doing in covering you. It's even a prophetic word for me. It's even a prophetic word for me. I feel like I'm prophesying to myself. There are many people who will say, oh, look at that woman. She's single and she's in ministry. She's disqualified. And God says, no, no, no. I am your husband. I have sent my Holy Spirit, the comforter, like a comforter, to literally cover you. I am your husband and I cover you in my righteousness, says the Lord. People will look at you. I remember seeing this thing on Amy Simple McPherson. She had left her husband to go into ministry and people would judge her. And she even got divorced. And people would judge her. But you know what? God qualified her idiot and she started a whole movement and i want you to know when god calls you he qualifies you and he is your covering and when you have walked in unrighteousness that makes you feel disqualified i see this poor white sheet coming down from heaven landing on you and covering you of your sin and your unrighteousness you know, I think of the story of uh, Peter, when Peter was up in the terrace and he was fasting and he was up in the terrace spending time with God and he went into a vision. And in this vision, there came a sheet down from heaven and the sheet on uh, and the sheet had on it all the, these kind of grotesque things like lizards and frogs and serpents. And, and he heard a voice from God, a voice from heaven, God speaking to him and said, take and eat. And Peter was a holy man of God. He was a Jewish man and he was kosher and he was instructed not to eat certain things. And he said, God, no, I can't eat those. Those things are unclean. The law calls that unclean. And the Lord said to Peter, what I have called clean is clean. There are people who have walked in homosexuality, who have repented and come to the Lord, and now God has called them into full-time ministry. And God says to you, what I have called clean is clean. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, I have called you and you have answered my call and what I have called clean is clean is clean. And God says, you are clean. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So in order to be qualified, it is the redeeming grace of God through his son, Jesus Christ. That is the only qualifier you need. To answer the call of God for this moment in time, this destiny moment, these last days, this end times moment. For you to fulfill the call of God in your life and for me to do the same. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I want to tell you a little bit about Lady Jesus. Lady Jesus, the study, as an intro, I want to tell you, has five sections. The first section is called The Beloved Bride. In the book, you will see a section called The Beloved Bride. That Lady Jesus is the Beloved Bride of Christ. The second section is called The Warrior Queen. Lady Jesus is a warrior queen. She has the keys to the kingdom. She puts on the armor and she goes out and kicks butt. Lady Jesus is a radiant deliverer, radiant deliverer. And a radiant deliverer is what I would call a she Moses. Okay, for women it's a she Moses and for men it's a male Moses. I know we see all these male characteristics in scripture, but you know, God sees them for women too. Lady Jesus is heaven's healer. 
that she has healing hands and when she touches she brings healing health healing and wholeness and last but not least lady jesus is a loving redeemer she is she is the hosea who rescues the gomer from the place that gomer has lost himself or herself into captivity and into harlotry and into sin, the backsliding Christian, the broken prostitute. And Lady Jesus is the loving redeemer that goes and rescues the lost. I just want you to know, you know, some people would say, oh my gosh, that's totally codependent. I'm just telling you, when Jesus moves and operates in and through us, we are rescuers. I was telling you yesterday about the redeeming work of God. I remember when my husband and I first got married, you know, I was in a, um, this is in the book and I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to tell you. And it's in the intro. I was, when I first married my husband, he had bought me a camera for my birthday. And, and so I had asked him for a camera. So it was my birthday. And so I was laying in bed, you know, he would give me my gifts early in the morning. It was like, you know, burning in his pocket kind of thing. And so when I woke up, he would He'd be up bright and early on my birthday and he'd come and he promised me he'd have a cup of coffee on my nightstand every morning because my dad used to do that. So there'd be a cup of coffee on my nightstand. And so he had my uh, present. He brought me this box and he said, a card and box. And I opened the card. It was beautiful. And then the present and I opened the present and it was a camera. And he said, can I take a picture of you? And he took the camera from me. And here I am laying in bed in my nightie. And, and he takes a picture of me in bed early in the morning. And then he gives me the camera. And he says, look at it. And I took the camera and I looked at the picture. And I saw a picture of Jesus. And I couldn't find the picture of me. It was a picture of Jesus. My husband had taken the camera and taken a photograph of Jesus and pretended to take a picture of me. And the picture he wanted me to see was a picture of Jesus. Because he was saying to me, you are a manifestation. As my bride, you are a manifestation of Jesus in my life. When we lay down our lives and pick up our cross and follow him, we are a manifestation of our Redeemer to the world around us. The Lady Jesus anointing is completely tied at its core with our identification with the Son of the Living God. When we are identified in Christ as a child of God, as a daughter of God, as a son of God, made in his image, filled with his Holy Spirit, this is where the manifestation of the power of God comes from. And those people around you will know you're not perfect. Yes, there are going to be times you're walking in the flesh. But you know what? When you walk in the Spirit, you are a manifestation of the power of God and the person of God in the circumstances that you are in. Just like God was with Jesus, God will be with you. Just like Jesus would look at the Father and say, Father, you get to call him Father. Just like Jesus could walk on water, you will walk on water. You will raise the dead. You will heal the sick. I can't tell you how important it is for you to understand that your miracle power comes from your identity. And I, you know, one of the things the Lord shows me all the time is when people are struggling with gender confusion or uh, homosexuality or even, I, you know, a prostitution or drug addiction or whatever. It's like the Lord says to me, they're not struggling with drugs. They're not struggling with gender confusion. They're not struggling with lust. They're struggling with their identity. They do not realize that their identity is in me. My breath is what I breathed into them. I made them in my image. And the Son of God, Jesus Christ, came to restore the image of God in you. And the image of God in you is the Holy Spirit that fills you up. The breath of God that was blown into you in the Garden of Eden is blown into you again because the Savior of the world sanctified you and you were born again so you could be filled with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Identity. Identity.
identity. Your qualification comes from your identity in God through Jesus Christ as a child of God, as a son or a daughter of God, an heir to the kingdom, a royal priest, a holy nation, a prophet, a prophet after God's own heart. I want you to understand your identity is the thumbprint of God. Everyone has their own unique thumbprint. God's thumbprint on you is your identity. And your identity is the key to unlocking that storehouse of miracles in your life. In your soul is a storehouse of miracles. And I see these gates, these sliding doors in front of this storehouse that is locked shut and when your identity, the thumbprint of God in your life, touches that door, key, that door will open. It is a voice recognition door. And when you speak in the name of the Lord, those doors will open. And those miracles in there that not just for you, but miracles that you are to perform are in that storehouse. And they will be released unto you for you to go into that storehouse like Joseph did. And where Joseph stored for seven years for an entire nation during plenty. And in the times of famine, he was able to give out those mir that, that provision. God is going to have you step into his storehouse that he has ordained for you. And like Joseph, you're going to be measuring out the anointing of God. You're going to be measuring out the miracles of God for the people. You will be the performer of miracles and you will be handing out miracles to the nation around you, to the people around you, to the hurting around you, to the broken around you, to the cancer stricken around you, to the sick around you, to those with HIV. You will be the one laying hands on the sick and healing. You will be the one parting the waters and being bringing deliverance. You will be the one with the keys to unlock prison doors. You will be the one with the end Isaiah 61 anointing of the Lord upon you so that you will be able to preach and set the captive free and give sight to the blind. You'll be able to make the lame walk. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. It's just a spirit of humility and gentleness on me today from the Lord just because of where God has me today and to have a contrite spirit and a humble heart and to just come before him even recognizing my own sin nature and you know the quickness of my words or my tongue and just to consecrate it all and be in the blood be soaked in the blood this morning God gave me a vision I was with a friend of mine we were walking in the park and it was like these washer women you know where they have this big bucket where they're washing clothes and the Lord said everything you have it was that bucket it was filled with the blood of Jesus and the Lord said everything you have and you are has been dipped in the blood of Jesus Christ it has been consecrated and sanctified everything your money your clothes your material possessions your home your law degree your nursing degree your doctor's degree any degree you have your education your ministry your children your car your every dime in your bank account has been consecrated in the blood of Jesus it's been washed in the blood of Jesus and now it is holy for you to use for my purposes and I will use those things in and through you to bless you and others thank you father idiot I better run I'm totally out of time God bless you guys. The Lord just wanted me to deal with qualifier today. Qualifier. What is a qualifier for being a lady Jesus? What is a qualifier for being a workman approved unto God? What is a qualifier for being a prophet to the nations? A, a heaven's healer and a warrior princess, a warrior queen, the bride of Christ. What is the qualifier for being heaven's deliverer? All of those things are qualified because God has called you through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I love you guys. God bless you. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. You are qualified as a workman unto God in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree it over you in the name of Jesus. I bless you today as you continue to walk in the anointing of the end times dispensation of God for this last generation that you are a parent to the last generation or you are a la uh, the last generation. You're one or the other. You're either a parent to the last generation or you are the last generation. 
direction. And God is qualifying you, qualifying you and preparing you for you to continue to get the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life for these last days. You know, there, uh, the Lord showed me that there have been generations and generations, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David and all of the prophets were waiting for this moment for us to realize who we are in God and for everything to click together. For us, God is using us to wrap up the nations, wrap up the, the world, wrap up history. We are in this season where we are wrapping up the world. We're wrapping up all of time. Chronological time is coming to an end. And God is using us to wrap it up. The rapture's around the corner. Armageddon is in the next generation. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Because God is going to do a great and mighty thing in you and I. Because he is preparing us to fulfill the call of God for this very last generation. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you guys. This is Lady Jesus Jane signing out. Bye. In the last days, Idi Arotakari Arotakari.